Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good to see you this morning. Palm Sunday service is starting right now. Talking about Jesus. Him showing the world on that Palm Sunday that He was God. King. King of the world. King of kings and Lord of lords. The King was coming into His city. And the Son of God was coming into his house. It's a beautiful picture of what took place in the Old Testament. We're going to talk about that. So all y'all are signing on. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. So uh, we need to try to settle down things in your house. It's a time of worship. If we was at church, you'd be focused totally on, on the Word of God and the presence of God. So I'm going to encourage you right now to, to turn everything else off and get the kids to sit down and be part of it or... You know, get out your Bibles. Come on, we need our Bibles. Thank God that no matter what happens, you should have a Bible in your house. If the electricity goes off, you still got the Word of God. Amen. Keep your faith through this time of trial. And uh, let's pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name this morning. We know, Lord God, that we're in a time of tribulation and trials and and testing but Lord you said yea though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death you are with us we'll fear not because you're with us and Lord today I rebuke fear in people's lives and I pray that faith would grow that faith comes by hearing and hearing your word and this morning as your word goes forth through the internet around the world Lord God I pray that lives will be touched and changed in Jesus' name we pray for all of the people that are losing loved ones, all the life that is being lost at this time, the grief and the, the, the confusion and fear and anxiety that's going around the world. I say God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So Lord, I pray for everyone watching me that they know that they have a sound mind and that you're going to bring us through all these things. Lord, I, we know that these things were already prophesied that it's not taking you by surprise. So we're going to trust that you are in our today and you are already in our tomorrow, Lord God. Pray for the anointing on everyone listening. I pray for protection on all the house of God. On Christian Family Worship Center, the blood of Jesus is upon the doorpost and door lintel of our house. That means this plague must pass over. It cannot rest upon us. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to Egypt. So Lord, we stand on your word and your promises, knowing that all of your promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And Satan, I say, the blood of Jesus is against you. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You must be under our feet, not in our lives. So Lord, at this time, may we learn to love you with all of our heart and grow close to you and learn to have compassion and love for one another. I also pray right now, Lord, for all of the people Lord, the first responders, the doctors, the nurses, all those that are on the front line of this battle where they're seeing the, the death and the, the effects of this virus. May you give them strength. Heal their hearts because only you, Lord, can heal the brokenhearted. Let the anointing touch them and let your glory surround them and protect them. Thank you for your angels that are at work right now. Bearing us up so we don't dash our foot against a stone. Thank you for your promise, Lord God, that a thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it will not come near us. I'm going to dwell in you, Lord God. This morning, Lord, in my weakness, make me strong. Let your word do what it's meant to do. Bring life and light. In Jesus' name I pray. Can you all say amen, amen, amen. This morning we're talking about Palm Sunday, the last week of Jesus' life. And you need to realize that the four Gospels mentions this day in all four Gospels. The day that Jesus gets a colt, a donkey, rides it down into Jerusalem, goes into the temple, which is his house, and they're shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. He knew that when he was doing this, he was fulfilling the prophecy to the whole world that he was king. He started to finally come out of the closet, as they say, and say, you know, I'm ready to let, God's ready to let everyone know who I really am. This really started at the resurrection of Lazarus. 
he let his friend die and four days later he goes and raises him from the dead and he tells him if you would only just believe you'll see the glory of God and I'm going to say right now to all of you watching if you'll just keep your faith if you would just believe through all this you're going to see the glory of God I've said this and I really mean it to live is Christ and to die is gain so in death as a Christian as a true believer there's no loss there's only gain God has promised us paradise. God has promised us the most amazing promise. He says, our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard. It has not entered into our hearts what God has prepared for those that love Him. But at the same time, we've got work to do. We are the hands of God. We are the voice of God. We are the feet of God. We're to just show the compassion of Jesus Christ everywhere we go. So during this time, don't draw back. I want you to begin to press into your relationship with God. Because today I want you to know that Jesus Christ is, and the relationship we have with Him is way more important than religion. And we're going to see this right here in the story of His triumphant entry into Jerusalem. He's coming down into Jerusalem. He's going to the temple and the, the normal religious activity, the Pharisees and the high priests and all those that were doing their religious duties were upset with Him because people were not drawn to the dead religion anymore. They were drawn to the living Christ. And that's what we see in this story. So I'm going to be talking to you out of the book of John, John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19, and also the story in Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. Now, in the story of Luke, it tells us that in, in verse, uh, in verse uh, 37, they were worshiping him and with loud voices because of the mighty works that he did. And then in verse 38, it says this, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. The king who comes in the name of the Lord. They're shouting, the king has finally come. They are acknowledging, and Jesus is acknowledging he's king. See, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, a few days before this, this whole thing started right there. He said to God, I know you hear me, but I'm going to say this so that these other people can hear. The Jews that had come to uh, mourn with Martha and Mary, they saw the resurrection of Lazarus after him being dead for four days. And they went out as witnesses of the power of Jesus Christ. And so whenever Jesus shows up at Jerusalem, the word gets out, Jesus is there, and everyone is gathering and running to him. They're not running to the temple. They're not running to the, the outer courts. They're not running to, to do the old type of worship, which they did year after year after year, just routine, do the same thing, do the same thing. There's a living God. His name is Jesus Christ, the living Christ. And your relationship with him is what this is all about. He came to reveal to us that he was the Messiah and is the Messiah. And this week, it's an amazing week. As I studied this, I come to realize that this, this month now, the Jewish calendar is Nisan. And right now, this is the 10th day of Nisan. And see, whenever I did this study just last week about the Passover lamb, it says you go and get the lamb or a male lamb or a goat, bring it into the household on the 10th day of Nisan, the first month of the Jewish calendar. And then you keep it in the household and you make sure it's a perfect lamb. It should be a perfect sacrifice. And on the 14th day at twilight, you're going to offer it up. That's the Passover as the sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb. And you're going to take the blood and put it on the doorpost and door lintel, And everyone that's in that house will be safe from the, 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 the plague that's going to be passing through the land to kill the firstborn. And when it comes to that house, it's going to see the blood and it's going to pass over perfect picture of Jesus. Jesus is fulfilling the Passover feast in himself. He gets a donkey because it's prophesied in Zechariah 9.9 9, and also in uh, 2 Kings 9.13 that he's going to be on a donkey. The Messiah is going to come. The king is going to ride into his city as a king and he's going to go into his house. Because he says in the same portion of, of scripture, he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So the lamb is riding on a donkey 
on the 10th day of Nisan, he goes into the house where he's going to be examined. And for the next four days until the 14th of Nisan, which is going to be Passover at twilight, that's when the Passover starts and they have the Last Supper and those last hours come and they capture him and they try him. Some theologians said he went through seven different trials. They tested him and they could not find anything wrong with him. But the high priest who always offers up the Passover lamb, the high priest said crucify him. And it's amazing how the high priest ended up offering up the lamb of God, Jesus Christ, for the sins of the world. John the Baptist introduced us to the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. I'm not worthy to even loose his sandals. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I baptize you with water. But he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Thank God that we can be filled with the Spirit of God because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Well, this all starts here. And so we've got four groups of people that are, are gathered here. We have the disciples that have been following him for, for three and a half years. And they still, you can read the story, they still could not understand what was going on. But it says after he was glorified, they remembered what had happened. Well, you, we know why. Because the Holy Spirit touched them. Jesus opened their understanding to the scripture. And they began to know things that they did not know before. See, there's so many things that we cannot understand or we don't receive. We don't get revelation of until we have a relationship with the living God and the Holy Spirit, we seek to know it, the Holy Spirit, Spirit brings that revelation to us. And let me tell you, revelation, true knowledge, it, the, to understand the things of God is where the power of God is gonna really flow in your life. So when we go through troubles, we have a good understanding that God is still on the throne. Some of my favorite scriptures, one of them is, for we know, that all things work together for the good for them that love God and to those that are called according to His purpose. Hey, we know these things. Do you have a revelation of it? But he says over here in Luke, he says, if we don't praise Him, see the Pharisees, they rebuked. They said, Jesus, you need to rebuke your disciples. Don't you hear what all these people are saying? You need to, you need to make them get quiet. Shh. Silence everybody. You know what Jesus said? If I would silence them, the rocks would begin to praise. The rocks would cry out. And I did, you know, just did a little study while I was preparing this. And I looked at all the different places where rocks were involved in the scripture. Listen to this. Moses, whenever the people of Israel were thirsty, he struck a rock and water came out and brought life. What if that rock could talk? It did. It spoke, I'm going to bring life because God said, out of me will come life. How about Joshua? When he parted the waters, after he did that, they set up rocks as a memorial that every time the people walk by, they see these rocks and they, the rocks are speaking of what God has done. So as we come and go, generation after generation, the rocks are still here. Archaeologists can can dig up things and, and all it does is every time they do it with the right kind of science and right interpretation, it proves more and more that Jesus Christ is the King, the Son of the living God. Rocks, isn't that amazing? <laughs> Same Joshua, when he needed a revelation from God, he went to sleep and he had his head on a rock and then he had a vision of a, of a ladder coming up and down from heaven. How about David when he needed to kill the the giant Goliath, what he did, he reached into the, 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 the waters or the, the brook and he pulled out five rocks. And one of those rocks took out one of the enemies of Israel. Nehemiah, when the walls had been broken down in Israel, he gathered stones together and rocks to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, the city of God. And the rocks were used in another way too. Achan was killed by him. The woman caught in adultery when they went to stone her with rocks after Jesus spoke words of compassion and wisdom. They dropped their rocks. If those rocks could tell the story of what Jesus said that day and did. Isn't that amazing? How about Jesus when he was put in the tomb? What did they do? Roll a stone, a rock, a big rock in front of it. And then when he was coming out of the grave, the rock was rolled away. 
and the people could get in and bear witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I like this from the, the, the great revelation by Peter, Simon, Barjona. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I say unto you, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus is the rock, and he says, Peter says this, the one that he spoke to us, he says, we are all living stones that will be praising God. We are the household of God, joined together. So if we're not going to praise him and worship him, then the rocks are going to cry out and praise him. I want to be one of those living stones, one of those rocks that are going to be praising him. Amen? Now, as Jesus was coming to go into Jerusalem, his city, knowing that he was pronouncing himself to be king, because in those days, in the time of peace, kings would ride donkeys. In times of war, they ride horses. That's why when Jesus comes back in Revelation 19, he's going to be riding on a horse and he's going to judge his enemies. He's going to make war. But he wasn't here to make war. He was here to make peace between us and God. To bring us back together again. But Jesus is saying, I'm the king. And they're saying, King Jesus, Messiah. But when he begins to go down into Jerusalem, he looks at Jerusalem, and while all this praise is going on, all this excitement is going on, it says Jesus weeps over Jerusalem because they do not recognize the time of the visitation that they're in, that the, the king has really showed up. Because a few days later, these same people that are praising him and saying, you're the king, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, are saying, crucify him. That's how easily you can be influenced by religion that has another way for us to reach God and reach God through a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to know, number one, Jesus is more appealing than religion to me. And he was that day to them. They went for the feast, but they heard about Jesus and they ran to him. I have this religion emphasizes the outward but Jesus always emphasizes the inward. He wants you to examine your heart today. It's not about what you can do on the outside. It's about your passion and your love. What's going on in your heart? I hope there's some people out there that are learning about Jesus right now for the first time. And Jesus is reaching out through this camera right now to you. Saying, I want your heart. He loves you just the way you are, but he's going to change you. Because what needs to change is what's in our hearts. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. As a man believeth in his heart, so is he. There's so many things about the heart. Religion is always about what you cannot do. Jesus is about what you can do. So many times we say, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this, I'm not going to do that. And I say, well, what can you do? Well, uh... I don't know, but I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. It's, it's all about what you cannot do instead of what you can do. When Jesus said, well, Paul said, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Isn't this amazing? So religion is going to focus on what you cannot do. Jesus is going to activate what you can do. In fact, when he reaches out to have a relationship with you, he does it so that he can build faith in you through his word and you begin to know who you really are so then you can work the works of God like he did and you can do those works but you cannot do it without him you need to be filled with the spirit religion puts barriers up to separate people Jesus pulls down all the barriers the color of your skin doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you're a male or a female young or old rich or poor. Christ is the answer to all of us. He, he, the playing field is level in front of the cross of Jesus Christ and what he demonstrates to us. So he pulls down everything that tries to separate us from God. That's why he went to the cross. He took away the sin of the world. He conquered death in the grave and he gives us access to God. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ, that we could stand right before God and boldly come to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and grace to help in time of need. Because 
this priest, this man, God, can sympathize with your weaknesses because God took upon flesh, became like his brethren so that he could sympathize and experience, but he never fell. He was without sin. He is that perfect spotless lamb of God. Religion says you got to work your way. And I love this. Jesus said, I am the way. Whoo! Isn't that good? Religion says, you got to work your way. And Jesus said, I am the way. Come on, the truth and the life. No one can come unto the Father except through me. Religion says you can't get to the Father unless you do this and you do that and you don't do this and you don't do that. If you do this and you, you do this wrong, oh, you're going to lose your place. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself and has now given us the ministry of reconciliation. He is not holding our sins against us. Then he gives us the ministry of go and tell the whole world, be reconciled to God. Because Jesus died on the cross, he became sin. Who knew no sin? That you might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Another point I want to give you is scripture, when we read the scripture, is more reliable than a people's opinion. I like to hear people's opinions, but I want to hear what the scripture's got to say. Who do men say that I am? Jeremiah, one of the prophets? Some of them said he was a devil, that he did not come from God, he was Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Some people say he's a good man, but he's not truly the son of God. He's not God who became flesh. You know what? If your opinion goes against the word of God, I don't care what your opinion is. And if my opinion goes against the word of God, you shouldn't care what my opinion is. The scripture is more reliable than any experience you ever had. If an angel comes and tells you anything different than what the Word of God says, it says, let that angel be a curse. Don't follow this, these false things. In fact, in the last days, over and over, in Matthew 24, Jesus says, watch out for deception. Don't let anyone deceive you. They're going to come saying they're the Christ, and then, you know, there's going to be offense. They're going to want to kill you. There's gonna, the love of many is going to grow cold. We're going to betray one another. And then again, he keeps saying, do not be deceived. The best way to not be deceived is to learn what's in this book and have a relationship with God and let the Holy Spirit touch you. When you hear someone preach or teach, the Spirit of God, if you have the Spirit of God, will bear witness with your spirit and the Word of God that this is true and it will come into your heart and change your life. Jesus comes the Pharisees think you know, he's going to take over and that he, they're actually saying he's got a demon. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees all the time. And listen, another point is following Jesus is more important than just observing your own self. We can become self-absorbed so much and we look at us and our failures or our weaknesses. Or we, some of y'all look at yourself and think that you're all holy and and, and got spiritual pride. Do not trust in yourself. Trust in the living God. Become a follower of Jesus Christ because Christianity is simply what he says in, in the New Testament to Peter, James, John. Come follow me, Matthew. Come follow me and I will make you. I'll make you fishers of men. I'll make you into what you need to be. Be a follower of Jesus. And Jesus is here going into Jerusalem revealing himself as king, riding on a donkey, and they're praising him. And I'm going to praise him. I'm going to set my worship upon him. I am not going to waste my worship. Come on, say that. I'm not going to waste my worship. I enjoy sports. I enjoy uh, hunting. I enjoy uh, having a lot of things, but I don't want to worship the things of this world. Right now, do you realize the sport, sport arenas are, are empty? And maybe you're watching because you're not at a game today 
And Jesus Christ has got you finally where you're sitting down and you're going to look at a Bible, you're going to read a Bible, you're going to turn to some things online and listen to the Word of God. Let the Word of God penetrate your heart and change you. God's doing something in the midst of this mess that men have made. We, these things are happening because we live in a fallen world, but that's another sermon for another day. But this day, there's several different people there. There's the disciples there that have been with him for three and a half years. There's the witnesses of Lazarus' resurrection. They're there. They're, they, they started following him. They believed because they saw the power of God. There's the ones that heard from the witnesses of the resurrection. That's why if you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, go and witness to others about what you have seen him do. Because there's a group of people there because they believed, because they heard about the signs that he did. Then you have the Pharisees and the Sadducees there, the religious group that are plotting to kill Jesus because they're coming against their established religion. Oh my goodness. Guys, let's not go back. When John the Baptist started preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, they came out of Judea and Jerusalem and all the surrounding areas. They came out of the old to come into the new. God has something new for all of you. It's living. It's a living relationship with Him. And this is the beginning of the week of His passion where he's going to be tested and tried and rejected and he's going to be offered up. He knows on the twilight of the Passover on the 14th day that his blood's going to be shed and it's going to be for the sins of the whole world. He's going to tear down that temple he set in three days and he's going to raise up a new one because the new temple of God is you and me. When he died on the cross, where did he go? Huh. It says, he told the God, on the, the thief on the cross, said, today I'll be with you in paradise. He went to cleanse the temple so that whenever the veil was torn and the Spirit of God came out, when the Holy Spirit was going to come on the day of Pentecost, 50 days later, the temples of God would be prepared for him to move into the new temple and the old temple is no longer useful for the kingdom of God. He does not dwell in things made with hands, or temples made with hands. He dwells in you and me, and we are living stones that have been built together, the body of Christ, for him to live through us and reach this world in this time that the world needs us more than ever before. You know, this is a new way for me to be ministering, guys. I hope it's coming across clearly. But before we go, if you've never asked Jesus into your life, he died on the cross so that your sinful life could be forgiven, that your heart could be changed, that you could become a new creature, a new person in which God's spirit and God's life, God himself will dwell in you. And he'll change you from the inside out, but you've got to ask him in. He stands at the door of our hearts and knocks. And he says, if anyone will open up the door and let him in, he will come into them and dine with him and he would dine with them, make covenant. And he says, if you overcome, you will sit with him on the throne of God. He will be our God and we will be his sons and daughters. You know, as I've been teaching on this last week, I talked about the Lamb's Book of Life. Is, is your name written in heaven? We can have authority over the demons and all those kind of things. He says, but don't rejoice in that. We have authority over spirits, but rejoice because your name is written in heaven. You want to get your name written in heaven? Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for your sins on the cross, that his blood was shed, that he was taken off the cross, he was buried, and on that third day he was raised from the dead. And you know that he conquered death and the grave for you. Say, Lord, I will follow you. I ask you, be the Lord of my life. Come into my heart and change my life. This is how it's simply prayed. Pray this. Heavenly Father, I repent of all my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died on the cross for my sins, that He was buried, and that He was raised from the dead. I believe in the resurrection. 
of Jesus Christ. Jesus, come into my heart. I make you the Lord of my life today. By your grace, I will follow you for the rest of my life. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that for the first time, come on, text me, uh, send a message through, through Facebook, and let me know what God is doing in your life. We'll give you some information. We'll do what we can to help you walk with God.